Hi there, I'm here with Tom and this is Tom Tour. Today we'll talk about the KTM 890 Duke R. That and more after the intro. Yes, friends, it's the world premiere on Tom Tour. I'm probably one of the first people to have the KTM 890 here with me to drive and to give you a first look, first impressions, and a first conclusion. All that's coming up today. If you'd like more of Tom's content in English, let us know in the comments below, and we'll see that we can dub more videos. Now I'd say let's dive right in. Guys, nothing can stop me from testing this motorcycle today. As you can see, it already starts snowing over there. It looks better there, so that's where we'll go. We'll drive in that direction. We have a wonderful bike today, so I'd say let's start it. Big shout out to Kati M. Braumandl in Wels Thalheim, who loaned us this bike, and without him, this video wouldn't be possible. So, a big and huge thank you. And now, off into the Moto Vlog. Friends, let's start with our type of entry level drug two cylinders with 890 cubic. We have 121 horsepower. And we have a torque of 99 newton meter, so really awesome power. The inline two cylinder, of course, that we've not had in this form yet. Of course, we know it from the 790. The motor was incredibly easy to get going, was spritzy, had power, pushed forward, and we've got that in the 890 as well. There's more pressure here, especially in the lower rotational speed. Wait, I can go a bit down, drive a bit slower. There's no one behind me, and I'll show you something. Careful. Three, two, one. And there we go. It's incredible. Did you see this? Oh, fuck. This is awesome. I do not care that we only have 6.5 Celsius out here. This compresses your body. Seriously. Yes. I can't wait for drives in warmer weather. But I thought I really had to share this with you. And I want to say I was in street mode right now. We have different modes again. As you can see, you can switch driving modes. We've got sport, street, brain, or track. On this vehicle, we have the tech pack with cornering, ABS, traction control, and so on and so on. The bike has all that inside. You have everything you need. Of course, we, why would it be different for the Ready to Race company? It also has a quick shifter that works great, of course. I already really liked it on the 790 and here as well. Quite simply, it's convincing. It does a wonderful job and I just can't stop smiling. Additionally, what I noticed with the ride by wire mode, even in the different modes, even in street mode, this little beast is all really nasty and fast on the gas. Holy fucking crap. What's happening here? You can feel the 121 horses, and especially in the lower rotational speed, there's so much power down there, it catapults you into new spheres. And that is magnificent. <laughs> What we also want to try, of course, is how it is in a lower rotational speed, how does the motor run, and you can notice in street mode it's very relaxing. I'm carefully turning the gas handle and there's almost no jerking, so a really nice running motor in general. The motor seems very cultivated, relaxed actually, amazingly. It reminds me more of the Super Duke motor as of the 790, because the 790 was a bit jerky on the lower speeds as the 890 here. An awesome motor that really pushes forward, which we don't actually have a use for if the bike doesn't have a good suspension built in. And here at KTM, the top class, we have a WP suspension built in. The W Apex suspension runs really well. It's fully adjustable. Of course, with today's temperatures, not quite optimal testing conditions, but I can already say it does what it should do. We're sticking to our ideal line here, we're not sliding around, and even when we're driving with more pressure, there's still room for more. The suspension in general seems very flexible, at least from what I noticed during the first few kilometers. On the one hand, it is very relaxed, but on the other, when you really twist the throttle, it pushes through the turn without having any troubles, and when you're driving over uneven road, bumps or something like that, the bike smooths that out really well. That, of course, is also due to a comfortable sitting position. We're sitting fairly upright, Lower than on the old one, the footrest was put a bit higher, the handlebar a bit lower. We can position ourselves like on a sports bike very well, but also as for driving in the city, more relaxed. So, we talked about the first two aspects of today's video, so now number three. 
brake system in clutch. What have we got here? What was built in? First, in the front, we've got a double disc brake system, which already worked very well for the 790. I didn't think that this was something they needed to improve, but KTM gave this one the brake system from the Super Duke, and this is pretty much the top. The Brembo system is incredible. It's definitely one of the best systems out there. I really can't say enough good things about this. Very nicely meterable, the brake, completely relaxed. You hardly need any pressure on the handle for it to slow down, but you can pull the brakes hard as well. Incredible. The standard ABS and traction control do their job smoothly. There's no jerking from the ABS, it's very well attuned. With these road conditions, the traction control has jumped in and wanted to help out, and it did that very well, really clean. One thing I have to criticize, sorry KTM, but this is important to me, they didn't spend enough money on the clutch. They only installed a cable clutch, not a hydraulic one. It's okay, it's smooth, it works well, and especially in combination with this awesome quick shifter from the 790 that works wonderfully, you don't need it that often. Clutch and brake are adjustable, of course. Let's do a quick walk around. Let's talk about what we have on the bike and what we could get in terms of additions. First, we've got the design of the KTM 790. A few things were changed. For example, the footrests were installed a bit higher and the handlebar came down a bit. So you sit in a more active position, which I think is a very good thing for this bike, especially because it's still comfortable to ride. Of course, we don't know how it will be for longer rides. Here in the front, we have the Brembo system from the Super Duke. And what can I say? There's nothing bad about it. It's from the Super Duke. Hello? The only thing I can say is that it's incredible. Here we have the standard light design. Everything's LED, left, right, in the back, the front, everywhere. This is something we could talk about, but KTM has this on every bike, so you already know this. If you don't like the design in front, you might not want the bike, of course, but if you like it, you'll love it. On this side we have the torpedo pipe, this comes with the bike, but of course there's Akrapovic for all of you, but the standard exhaust is great as well. Down here you can see how they hit the catalyst, the piping was also done very well, and it looks stylish. I also like that there's only one big pipe on the lower part, not a bunch of extra parts sticking out under there. They have a stylish solution for that. The emphasis on the engine block is nicely executed as well. The bike comes with a pretty pillion cover and a not so pretty license plate holder. We'll just get rid of that and get a new one. Not expensive and worth it style-wise. We've got a narrow design. If you look at it, the front is a bit protruding, but the middle part is so narrow that almost anyone can reach the ground. I'm 1 meter 83 and I'm grounded nicely. I think the design was made this way so it can be a bike for everyone. Weighs 166 kilograms. Motochecker tells me that the KDM 790 has 169 kilograms dry, so we are a bit lighter as the 790, even though she has more power, so better attuned in general. Let's talk about the tank. The look is not necessarily great, I didn't really like it on the 790 either, but I did get used to it. It fits 14 liters, so it can handle a few kilometers in a longer ride. And I'm really excited to see what you have to say about it, your opinion, so let me know in the comments below. So, I'd say let's go on to the little details of the bike. I'll give you some more information. We have the standard display, the standard elements, left and right. Nothing changed there. It is state-of-the-art, of course, high-quality components. The display can show you all kinds of information, like gear, temperature, speed, and of course, rotational speed. Everything's digital, nothing analog anymore, which is fitting for KTM. Concerning menu navigation here, even I, and I'm an idiot regarding electronics, figured out how to turn traction control off, switch between driving modes, it's very intuitive, everything can be adjusted while driving, so no stress, you don't have to stop to change between street, sport or whatever. And even here, I'm driving really slow in fourth gear, and look, 
I'm accelerating and and it's so flexible. <laughs> it's wicked. It's just so smooth. So KTM, well done. Nice job. My compliments. What I also noticed, the 890 got the Super Duke mirrors. That was a smart idea. The 790 had the other ones. I can't actually remember from which bike she got those. They weren't as pretty. The Super Duke mirrors are perfect for this bike. All elegance, beautiful. I like them and it's just another nice little thing. I do have to confess regarding motorcycles, I'm a very emotional person. I got really excited about this power naked bike that of course doesn't have the power of the Super Duke and also not little enough power to be drivable for people with A2 driver's license. But they gave the engine an awesome update. It's smoother and they didn't lose anything sound wise. Wow, I'm speechless concerning the engine. This engine, seriously, thank you KTM. If this gets put into the other models as well, blow my mind, that's crazy. Wow, I'm just speechless right now. I got an expert's opinion from superbike driver Roland Resch and may quote him here. He is under contract as a driver for KTM and Kiska. He got to test the 890 at the Red Bull track, which is the fastest track at the MotoGP and he got to compare it with the 180 horsepower strong KTM 1290 Super Duke. Even though he mostly drives 200 horsepower bikes, one could notice that he had so much fun with the 890 Duke R. He told me, honestly, we've never had something like this from KTM before. The 890 was a surprise from the start, even at the beginning stages. Even though she's a lot lighter than a lot of super sport and sports bikes, if driven professionally and rough on the track, the 890 shows much better stability and controllability in the brake and cornering phase as is usual in her class. And all that with a very strong brake capability. That's Roland's opinion. Find out more on motochecker.at. I also have to say, and this hasn't happened in a while, that this is a bike where after a few minutes of riding I thought, Let's go and have some fun. It's cold, it's fucking freezing. We have five or seven degrees and still I already feel home on this bike. It's so easy to navigate and so smooth to drive. My only other criticism I have, because this is the R version, it is a bit more expensive. So my conclusion, engine, seriously, a whole new world. An awesome update, really great. Suspension, I just can't say a lot about that today. I'd want to drive it more to give you a reliable opinion. You'd have to test your limits to really know. First impression is that it's agile, easy to drive and uncomplicated. The riding position and braking is very good. You can sit in a rather relaxed or more active position and the knee position especially is very pleasing. You sit a bit lower in the bike, which I'm not so used to. I like riding supermoto. So it's always a bit unusual to sit this far into the tank, but it doesn't bother me here. I really felt comfortable the minute I got on the bike. Of course, some people might miss the rough, aggressive engine. I like if an engine also lets me drive more relaxed without any jerking around. That is really nice and fun. And especially if it doesn't lose anything in rotational speed. Oh, great. He's just going to drive out. And Anyway, it doesn't have to give up anything else for it. You still have a lot of fun and I just want to sign the papers to buy this oh bike. My, I'm just so surprised what this thing can do. Holy crap. And now that we're here, before we give it back, guys, back from our ride. And I think you could see the smile on my face. After this, I'll go and see if I can get the papers to buy this bike. Holy crap. I test a lot of bikes. During the last two years, I got to drive at least 100 to 200 different bikes. And there aren't a lot of bikes where I can say that once I get on it, I feel the spirit. I feel home. I have incredible fun with the engine and KTM really has done it. The 890 has a flexible engine that also works great in the lower rotational speeds and in the higher ones and in the middle. So basically everywhere. It pushes you forward and you just ask yourself, huh? How, how is this possible? So absolutely insane. The extra power is nice, although it is an even more unreasonable bike than the 8790, but I like it. I, to be honest, like unreasonable bikes. 
Regarding suspension, as I said before, I can't say a lot about that. That needs to be tested thoroughly, which was with only six degrees snow at first, just not possible today. So I don't want to take too much away from the video coming up. There will be a big conclusion video when it's warmer and the corona times are over. The other big highlight is the brake system. We basically got the Super Duke system as a freebie from KTM, which works wonderfully. It's smooth, it's meterable, it can slow down relaxed, but also hard if needed. Now, for a lot of my viewers, there's a big negative. The bike's not for A2 licensed riders. 121 horsepower, inline two-cylinder, 99cc. Ugh. I really need to do something about this. I'm really starting to get addicted to things. The other issue could, of course, be the price. Where are we with this bike? In Austria, it's 13,899, and in Germany, 11,995. So it is manageable, especially considering that it's a bike for track day, for normal street riding, for day-to-day -day use. But honestly, if you can't ride the 890 on a track, you won't be able to really test its potential. I realized that right away, I really shouldn't tell you the top speed from today's ride, so I'm not going to do that. This thing pushes so hard, so you should definitely give it a try on a track to test out its full potential. So, what do you think? What's your opinion on this bike? Which bike should compete with the 890? I'm thinking the 790, the 1290, but which other friends should compete with this bike? I can't think of a lot of bikes that are comparable to the 890 right now, so let me know in the comments below. So don't forget to subscribe. If you like the English version, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. This was Tom with Tom Tour. Thank you for watching. Bye.